Hey guys, um, going live here. Awesome, got them both up. Wait for a few people to jump in. Here we go. I hope my connection holds. Hope my connection holds fast. Oh, that's not good. Hi, Facebook people. Glad you guys are on. Um, my Instagram side looks like uh, my phone's not connecting very well, so uh, hopefully that holds up. Here we go. If I cut in and out, it looks like my, my connection isn't um, the best. I'm at my parents' house in Kansas City. Uh, decided to come visit them, and so we'll see how things go. Um, but it's good to hear, good to see you guys, or good for you to see me. I wish I could, I could see you all. As our communities start to reopen, I don't know what other states are like, but today in Kansas City is kind of the first day that people can open coffee shops and whatnot. So my wife shop here soon and I'm uh, really looking forward to it. It'll be good. We've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, <clears throat> talking about Jesus' upside down kingdom and how different it is from the world and how good that is. Uh, how good it is that our, um, yeah, our God sets up his kingdom to run differently. And my question, I, I've, I've noticed just in my life that people tend to be either um, Proverbs or Psalms people is kind of what it seems like. Um, not that they don't, you don't appreciate both or read both, but people tend to either spend a lot of time in the Psalms or a lot of time in the Proverbs, that kind of um, emotional versus logical or however you want to think about that. I'm curious, would you consider yourself more of a Psalm person or a Proverb person? I think I'm having some connection issues again, so sorry if I'm cutting in and out, but if you can hear me, you should respond. That'll be a good indicator to me if I'm getting through here. <laughs> Psalms or Proverbs? Which kind are you? Which which do you which do you tend to, to read? I'm I'm definitely a Psalm Psalm guy. Definitely a Psalms person. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just sit in there. Proverbs, got it from my engineer dad. <laughs> yeah. I I agree with, with the Psalms. Uh, but I I I always kick myself. I pray, I ask, I ask the Lord to give me wisdom um, fairly regularly, and then I don't read the Proverbs as much as I should. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm praying for wisdom, but I'm not going to wisdom, and so um, reveal some of my heart there. Proverbs, Proverbs, but regularly convicted by Proverbs, amen. What, what is your favorite proverb, if you, don't, if, if you guys are willing to share that? Favorite proverb. I think mine is, um, just because it's, it's kind of crazy, I don't even remember, again, not a Proverbs guy, I don't remember exactly which one it is, but there's a proverb that says a joke, and it says something, and then says, I'm just kidding. Convicted by that one, and it's just such vivid imagery. Um, used to be Proverbs, more Psalms, yeah, Proverbs 4, good. good. Well, I hope it's been a blessing to you, whichever one you've been reading this summer, hopefully both. Hopefully, Proverbs people are learning to slow down and think about their emotions and get into the Psalms. And hopefully, us Psalm people are learning to not only ask for wisdom, but seek it in the Proverbs as well. Um, if, if, if you haven't logged in before, my name's John Hastings. Um, I, help with the, uh, I help with the campus ministry down here in, in Manhattan, Kansas. And so I'm excited to continue going through Matthew with you guys. We're going we're gonna to talk about judgment today. We're going to look at what Jesus says about judging others. And um, I'm in the basement, so I'm a little chilly down here if you see me kind of shivering. Um, but uh, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to pray for us to start our time here. Father, I, yeah, um, Lord, I'm so thankful just to, to be your servant this morning. I think about your word and how you, you say um, I should think of myself just as, a, as an unworthy servant. And, and Lord, I, um, I am I'm not worthy uh, to have been called to this gospel uh, to be uh, even a servant of the king. But Lord, you don't just call me a servant. You call me a son. You call me your son. And so how great the love that you've lavished on us that you would call us children of God, Lord. And so we just sit in that in awe and enjoy that you have bestowed such riches and grace on us, Lord. And, and uh, yeah, we just, we're thankful for that. And God, uh, help us all be an unworthy servant, Lord. Amen. So let's let's read our passage. Uh, starting in verse 1. And I, I, I'm just going to read verses 1 through 5. Okay, so let's read those. Uh, we, we might get into 6 a little bit. We'll see how much time we have. It says, Judge not, that you, be, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. 
and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So first off, right off the bat, I, I, <laughs> I just think about uh, Jesus talking here, this giant stick in your eye, and you're coming to someone and saying, hey, I think I see a speck in your eye, right? Like, like if, if somebody told this today, it, it, it would be like a joke. It would be worthy of, of laughter. Just kind of the imagery here is so dramatic. It's so strong that it's worthy. How, how ridiculous is it? If I am sitting here, right, in this, in this uh, live video, and I don't know, the, uh, I can see a video of you and I'm like, oh, hey, I think you've got some like paint on your hands, right? But I don't, right? Like I just got done painting a house. So that was the first thing I could think of. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, you should clean that off. It's really gross. You shouldn't do that, right? That, like, just how, oh, just kind of makes you want to throw up, right? It's just nasty. You, we, we all recognize that acting like that is, is, is not, it's just not good. It's not good for your heart. It's going to distance other people from you. Like you, we've always got logs in our eyes. It's almost like he's saying, um, he's not just talking to a specific group, hey, you guys are hypocritical and judgmental. He's, he's giving the Sermon on the Mount. And I think he has the whole crowd in mind while he's saying these things. And, he, and he's saying, why do you notice, not notice this log in your eye? And so as we're thinking about um, how to have gospel-centered, um, how to have how to gospel-centered communities, I think this passage is huge. I think this passage is really big. Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And, and so what the gospel teaches us is that all of us, this is what Romans 1 teaches us, every single one of us are, are dead in our sin. Uh, I think about the transition from Romans 1 to 2. He just Paul lists off this long list of behavior. And then he says, therefore, you have no excuse, O man. Every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, practice the very same things. And that's like a very bold thing for Paul to say. It's bold for him to say, you practice the same thing that you judge other people for without knowing, right? He's writing a one-way letter. He's not, uh, he's not necessarily addressing specific things, saying, don't judge for this, but he's saying, after this long list, whatever you judge, okay, your sin includes all these things. Your sin has a root of back into idolatry, all sin roots back into suppressing the truth of God, right? We would rather sin than know God, and so we suppress God so that we can sin. And he says we all do that. That is the law. And so understanding the gospel means that we understand we're all prone to idolatry. We're all prone to rejecting God. We're all prone to loving our flesh. We all have to crucify our flesh daily. We have to, we have to put Christ on daily and say, it's no longer I who live. I've been crucified with Christ. And the life I live, I live through Christ who gives me life, right? Um, what, what Jesus is saying here is, is that we've got to continually put this in front of us. And I just wonder, if we took this passage seriously, what kind of people would we be? And what I mean by seriously is what if Jesus really means it in verse 2 when he says, with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. Like what if he really means it that, that if somebody sins against you and you, you, you withhold judgment, as in like the condemning you deserve punishment kind of judgment, if you, if you are quick to forgive, right? Like, like he says, that's how you judge them. Or if somebody cuts you off in the road, if you're quick, if you're quick to forgive, pray for them, right? You're quick to, to remember, nope, there's a human being in that car that's living a life. This is not just a box of metal. It's not just a machine, right? Jesus says he'll be quick to do that with you. I, I wonder if we took him seriously and, and if we judged, right? Like if we see a Christian, maybe a Christian that's in our, our fellow midst, and we know, maybe we know for sure that they haven't read their Bibles for the last week, but a share time comes up and they get up there and they share like they've been sharing, like they've been reading their Bible consistently. And you're quick in your heart to be like, oh, I know you're not being honest. You're quick to hold them in judgment in your heart. I wonder if we took it seriously what Jesus said and studying or researching or, or every time you talk like that, since you judge this guy that way, I'm going to judge you that way. 
I just wonder what kind of people we would be, right? Like, I think we would be so quick to offer forgiveness, so quick to be slow to judge, so quick to be kind and, and merciful and, and gracious with one another. And, and that's, the, that's the kind of gospel community that we all want to make, right? Like, um, I did some Barna research recently. Um, by recently, I mean, like, within the last year. So, <laughs> or maybe two years. It's been a while, but um, maybe I shouldn't have said recently. <laughs> I did some Barna research within the last couple of years. And I was researching the most, like the, the reason why most people say they don't go to church. And one of the number one reasons is that they feel judgment in church. They come to church and, and they've got, you know, who knows what behaviors or patterns or sin or addictions that they're dealing with. And, and one of the reasons they stop coming is they feel judgment. And, and if, if this is true, then it means most of our churches are not centered on the gospel. It means that most of our churches are not places that or, or looked in the mirror and seen we all have these giant logs in our eyes. We all have these addictions and idols and things that we're fighting. And because we haven't done that, when somebody comes in that is wrestling with these things, we elevate ourselves above them and we look down on them. Say, hey, you should come up. Like, I'm not saying just acknowledge it in your mind, but when we functionally acknowledge it in our hearts and somebody walks into our, our congregations or our campus ministries that is broken or hurting or really wrestling with sin or, or maybe they just are like a not fun person to be around, when we functionally get that in our spirits, we'll have a welcoming environment naturally. It'll be a place we want to invite our lost friends into. Come and see this place where people acknowledge they're broken and they're just finding a savior <laughs> and they love one another. Come and see this place. This is, this is part of what a gospel culture will look like. And so my prayer and my hope is that we as leaders will take a long time looking in the mirror and we'll acknowledge the logs in our eyes and the sin in our heart and we'll make a place where we can invite people in and, and that we can uh, really love. Jesus is not saying, I think, that's, I think that's what Jesus is saying, be slow to have like a con condemning judgment on people. But it's really interesting, right after that, I guess I am going to get to verse 6, right after that, he says, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. And so it's interesting because it's almost like Jesus is saying, don't judge. But then right after that, he's saying, make a judgment, right? In order for me to not throw my pearls before pigs or, or before swine or, in, in order for, or before dogs, I have to judge someone as not um, as a pig or dog. Uh, that, that sounds really culturally abrasive there, but I'm just using Christ's own words. Does that make sense? Don't judge is what Jesus says, but then he says, but also don't throw your, your pearls before uh, pigs, and, pigs and, and, and dogs. And so I think how this works out is that we can still acknowledge and recognize someone's not a believer, somebody's opposed to the gospel, somebody's rejecting the gospel, doesn't want it. We can still that entering into a spirit of judgment. And so what that looks like is we share the gospel with they reject it, they reject it. In our spirits, we acknowledge, man, Jesus, the only reason I believe is because you're the author of my faith. I was in the exact same boat as this person. And that gives us compassion for them and patience and mercy in this conversation, but we're still able to walk away, right? So, so we aren't so kind to me to pull me out of unbelief. I wish you would believe that you would just repent of your sin, but because you won't, and I've presented the gospel again and again and again, I'm not going to throw my pearls before us, and it allows us to walk away. And so I think that's the differential, right? We can, we can judge people as believers or not believers. We can, we can judge um, people as, as uh, uh, ready to receive the gospel or not re receive the gospel as well as we can. Um, but in our hearts, we never condemn. It's never in our place to condemn because we've I've seen the logs that are in our own eyes. And so I think if we can really get this as a community, as a campus fellowship community, and later in our lives, it'll, it'll go really far. And as we parents someday. And I think this is where I've just seen a lot of day-to-day -day help is when my daughter is disobedient and unkind and rejecting me and yelling, it's easy for me to be like, oh, I know better than you. Why don't you just listen to me and get frustrated? And when I parent out of that frustration did you, how many times have I said, no, I know the better way to go. I know you're God, but I'm going to do my thing. Right, and, and, and when I and, and when I acknowledge that, I, I see the log in my eye, and then I look at my two-year-old daughter, and I realize, oh, this is a speck. This is a speck in her eye. It allows me to be compassionate, and allows me to be kind, and allows me to uh, discipline kindly, right, and, and with mercy and with uh, hope and love for her repentance, and not in anger. 
And so this judgment is critical for ministry. It's critical for parenting and in many areas of our lives. And I'm praying that we'll be people that take Jesus' word seriously. However you judge, it will be measured to you. I want Jesus to be merciful with me. I know I have sin. I deeply desire him to be merciful to me. So I want to be merciful to others. I want to pour out mercy because I know I want to receive mercy. The golden rule in that sense. And so I'm praying that we'll be a people like that. There will be a culture like that. So I hope that this gives you something to meditate on and think about as you guys turn. We invite you, as usual, to go read the word, to go meditate, to go uh, just pray, uh, ask the Lord for revival and renewal in your heart and in other people's lives. And, and I don't know if you guys remember a while ago, I talked about reading the Bible like you uh, assume you have foggy vision. We should also assume that about our hearts. Our hearts are deceitful above all else. And so assume that there's a log in your eye, but you can't see it. And ask Jesus to show you the log so that you can repent of it and have a gospel sense. Um, Lord, I thank you for this morning and for these students. Oh, Jesus, I just pray that you'd make leaders out of them. Leaders that are centered on the gospel. Leaders that love you with all their heart. Leaders that recognize their own sin and walk humbly before you all their days. God, I pray you do that for me. I pray you'd, oh Lord, show me the ways where I'm uh, growing proud. Show me the ways, Lord, where I'm, I'm thinking that I accomplished it on my own. Maybe in my mind I say everything comes from you, but in my heart I believe I studied enough or prayed enough or did enough or spoke enough. Oh God, I pray that you would just convict me of this and that I'd be able to repent, Lord, so that your gospel can flourish, so that fruit can abound, Lord, so that we can be a place where um, your, your light shines, Lord. We love you, Father. We thank you. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day, and um, I'll see you around. Hang in there. Bye-bye.